All right. What's up, guys? Um, I had this idea come to me recently. Um, basically, I was just thinking about the different principles of coaching and uh, the different competitive disciplines surrounding it, and I wanted to, it wanted to relate basically my coaching and Overwatch to uh, other competitive disciplines that I've experienced in my life. So I'll go through them now. Um, the three being swimming, playing football, and chess. And I'll just go through them one by one. Um, something that I wanted to relate and that I think about sometimes when I'm coaching Overwatch is um, player assignment or lane assignment or um, deciding your resources and where to spend them. So I closely relate this to um, <coughs> to football and the idea of sending person on person action rather than it being like zoning which a lot of people will interpret as like you take these big fights and then you basically just like have people go where they think they should be going and like you just have them in like these areas rather than having that I like having an idea of in a fight we're going to have person on person assignments and so if we know that the enemy team has attack visor let's say I'll say the D.Va has the assignment to go on the soldier, and let's say we want to cancel their beat, so our monkey will have the assignment to go to their Lucio, and so it's just creating these lane disciplines um, during a fight or just like game planning in general, and just like having people understand these principles, and I distinctly remember it because I used to play the offensive line and defensive line, but I mostly remember it in the offensive line because when we would be doing these plays sometimes the defense would be like in a weird position that we wouldn't have expected so the best example is having like five offensive linemen and then having three defensive linemen and so your assignments sometimes don't match up with what you think are like correct or what you are used to so on the offensive line sometimes you're just used to having one-on-one -on -one. so literally you're just blocking the person right in front of you and if there's like four or five people standing on the line then it makes sense but in these weird cases where there's only three sometimes you have these offensive linemen that either have to zone or they have to find a man to block but in a certain play that we used to run I would be the guard so I was to the right of the center I would pull behind the offensive line so I would run behind them and then I would either swing to the left or to the right, whichever way we were running. But I would swing behind them, and so I would leave my assignment, basically. The person to the right of me would take the assignment that I would have been blocking, and I would walk around the offensive line, um, and then continue to like walk forward and then block for the running back. And so like, there's some set plays where I relate this to basically like... Um, Hmm, I'm trying to compare it. It's probably like taking a Winston in a team fight and having him rather than um, go for a priority target that you might think that you need to counter, so like sending the Winston on the soldier in a fight, maybe taking him instead and helping him with the Genji dive someone that he wants to blade. So you take your Genji and you're like, okay, we're going to blade this fight, but we want someone to assist our Genji, so instead of having um, him go on his own, basically like a running back would be going on his own, and he would have to make the play on his own, you take the Winston, or uh, just a dive buddy with him, and then you assist him in that and making it easier for him, but it also creates this gap or this hole on the other side of the field or the assignment where, say, the soldier would be like uncontested more that fight, but the value you're getting from assisting the Genji in that fight is more valuable than leaving the soldier on his own where the resets you'll be getting are more valuable than the amount of damage that the soldier will be getting so it's just like these assignments also deal with like priority of the play and things that you want to do so um, it's just planning accordingly and then working with those plays to like gain an advantage um, the second competitive discipline I wanted to like talk about was um, swimming um, I don't see it as close relation I see football was more because it's way more team based and a lot of like planning and set plays and helping assist your team and swimming is a lot more focused on self-improvement and more focused on competing against yourself but I think the improvement that you get from swimming and learning uh, on how to improve yourself is a good direction on how to improve in overwatch so in swimming, you basically will focus uh, 
on yourself and basically you will compete with yourself in races and so um, a lot of times people will assume okay swimmers are swimming against other people that they're like racing against so you race against the seven other people in the pool that you're racing against but a lot of times the people who are the best don't actually end up like facing any of the people a lot of times it's competing against themselves because whenever you're in the race and you're concentrating on people around you you aren't concentrating on that goal of winning the game <coughs> A lot of times you just want to be focused on your own race, pacing yourself, deciding what you want to do. If you want to save your energy for the very end and then go all out at the very end. So maybe like give up a little bit of room and then like um, look to like push harder at the very end. I, I, I slightly compare this to Overwatch just in the fact that like for me, the self-improvement that I've looked on <clears throat> is a lot of just like self-reflection. So like if I'm doing something wrong, it's my fault and that I need to look to see how I can improve it and there's a lot of like small minute things that go differently in a swim race that you might not think about if you aren't a competitive swimmer so one of the things is flip turns um, when you're racing sometimes you'll end up diving and you'll go a little bit further than you would than any of your normal dives and all that relates to um, in a race is you being closer to the wall than you think you are so like say normally whenever you're about to do a flip turn you're two feet away from the wall but in this race because you've got a really good dive off the amount of strokes that you would have normally taken you're taking one less so you're having to do a flip turn early um, so it changes the dynamic of the race where normally you don't know how many strokes you are coming into the wall but it all affects because you're going to have to take that flip turn eventually and so um, you have to adapt on the go to hitting that wall so you can come off of it and have the correct speed and be the correct distance when you're hitting the wall so you can actually come off of it with good speed. I, I compare it very loosely to you can come into these team fights with a plan, um, knowing what alts they're going to use, knowing what things might happen in a fight, but sometimes this game is really good at amazing us with just random things that happen so randomly someone will get diva bombed or Farrah knocked off or Tracer will one clip or stick someone and it's all about adapting on the fly and deciding what to do after that that defines a good team so I've had moments and I've learned um, near the end of my playing um, to be a good adaptive shot caller especially in King of the Hill where Sometimes you take these fights and you, you're going in and you're not sure if you want to use alts, but you're basically just like taking these fights, assuming that at one point maybe you'll want to use alts, but you don't want to commit them unless you've reached a certain threshold. And so you enter these fights and you aren't quite sure if you want to use alts. You're just waiting for your shot caller to decide, and a lot of times that was up to me, to deciding at what point in this fight do we want to start committing alts so that we can win it or do we want to hold off and then save for another time so I just compare that loosely into my head where sometimes you just have to adapt and you just have to make a decision where um, the, the faster you are the higher chance you are going to have of winning um, just because you made uh, a quick judgment call and were able to execute on it and then the last is the one that I have the least experience in, but chess has really helped me um, kind of discover the way I like approach a lot of strategy things. So I feel like the way people have learned chess is a lot of times they will read a book on set plays and like the pros and how they've used certain plays to like learn the game. Um, where like you'll take a situation in the late game of the board and it's way easier to explain how to play chess through those examples rather than teaching someone the entire game because there's so many um, different moves that you can do where if you limit it down to just a few options you just are able to explore those options more thoroughly so I didn't really think of an example but you could think of having just two pieces on the board for black and then three for white where you have like maybe a queen king pawn versus um, bishop king or something something like that where 
the amount of moves that you can do are probably really limited because you want to protect the king while setting up your own checkmate, but if you were to do it from the start of a game, there's just so many more options to go through that it's really hard to teach someone. But I think the way that I learned was not through set plays, but through completing a game and going through the game, um, trying to hide as much as I can um, through like this baiting strategy where I, where I would give up pieces constantly but I would bait people into these bad situations where I was able to capitalize on it. So I think they would assume like these are the set plays that I'm going to be making because that's the way they've learned. But then I would take those set plays and like learn them, but not that I was going to use them, but just learn how to punish them. So I would take my pieces, put them set up, and then this person would be like, oh, this is easy. I'm just going to follow these steps where I normally would take these pieces and then I would win but I would just bait them into the fact where halfway through the play that they thought they were getting the advantage, I would then punish them by taking their piece and then setting up an advantageous position to either check them or checkmate them eventually. Um, it's helped me explore unorth unorthodox methods of how to play rather than learning like set plays um, and really like think, think minute details about the game and think differently of how people will strategize in a game where if you know and if you think you know how people are going to react then you can plan around that and like really surprise them with different plays that uh, they've really never seen or really aren't used to and create these traps basically where um, you, you'll give them the illusion that you're going to like um, take a bad play so give a random example of King's Row um, both teams a lot of times run Zarya especially on third you can give the illusion of an opportunity by stacking your team together but understanding that they're going to use grav because it looks like such a good opportunity for them to punish you and get like a good team fight but understanding that that's when you want to punish them is like knowing that they're going for the play is like the perfect bait tool where um, I'll think that you can just like have a rip tire behind them or maybe a reaper ult where the enemy team will be so focused on following up on a grab that they'll forget about the counter play that you can send at them because they'll be so hyped about the current play that they're going after. Um, that I think you can build strategies around baiting um, people into what they would assume are good plays for them but end up just turning on them because you've planned around it and know that they're going to be jumping on that opportunity.